How's it going, Gray Boys? After a very weird bowl season and us kind of getting screwed out of some recruits and a good bowl matchup, we managed to beat Louisville 52 to 9. And in this episode, we will go through the rest of the playoffs and our off season and see what we can do. So first on our list is to sim all these first round playoff matchups and see what happens. The Clemson team that we should have been playing will be playing USC in the Sugar Bowl in the first round there. And in this first matchup, it will be, let's take a look. Kind of look like USC, maybe 10. Oh, Clemson wins it 44 to 24. So a good win for them. It's a shame that we didn't get a chance to beat them. Second matchup is the Fiesta Bowl, Notre Dame and Auburn. The winner of this matchup will play the uh, Clemson Tigers. So we could have a double ACC semifinal. And no, it's Auburn and the SEC moving on to the next round, 48 to 31 in that victory. On the other side of the bracket, our first matchup is the Rose Bowl game between an 11-1 Ohio State and a 10-2 UCF. And somehow UCF is number four in the nation with two losses, so they must have been some very good losses. And winning that one, it looked like Ohio State, and it's, man, pretty chalky. What you would kind of expect, 31-20, UCF puts up a good fight. But Ohio State moves on to the semifinals. And our final game, I think, is the Peach Bowl. Yeah, there it is. Between Texas and Michigan, the one seed and I believe the eight seed. So who's going to move on to play Ohio State? Kind of looked like it was Michigan. And yes, 38 to 21, a pretty dominating victory for the Wolverines as they moved to 14 and 0 on their season. So let's try this again. Last time we tried to use the utility tool, things got a little bit wonky, but we will go for it on round two, our 18 playoff and the step two. And we can go ahead and see what's going to happen here. And there it is. So things look like they're working well. Auburn and Clemson, a big matchup, 14-0 versus 13-1 in the Cotton Bowl versus Michigan-Ohio State. I didn't even think about that. A huge rivalry game in the playoff semifinal. Michigan got the best of the Buckeyes the first time around. Can they do it twice in a season with an Orange Bowl victory? Oh, that is such a crazy storyline. I'm curious to see who they're going to be or who's going to be facing off in that championship matchup. So let's go ahead and save all of this data and get that done. And we'll start with the Cotton Bowl matchup just to build that suspense. So will the SEC make it into another championship game? Or what'll be the option? No, Clemson wins it 38 to 24. Again, the team that we should have been playing this season uh, in our bowl matchup, unfortunately for us, I guess I should say, unfortunately for Clemson, they're making it to the national championship game. So a little bit chalky there. But the question is, who are they going to face up against? It's not often that Michigan beats Ohio State. They've done it once this season. They're the number one team in the nation. Can they do it again? The suspense? Oh, no. Wolverines fans, close your eyes. It's 35 to 24. And that means it's going to be Clemson versus Ohio State in the national championship game. That is never how you want to see it, but we can go ahead and load our user data file in one more time. Let's set this championship game up. And there you have it. In Indianapolis at Lucas Oil Stadium, a 13-1 Ohio State, a 14-1 Clemson. That's, uh, that's a solid playoff bracket there. A lot of blue blood. Um, some really cool matchups. We could have had a cool USC Texas rematch, but I am totally fine with this, even if it is something that maybe we would actually see in real life. So one last time we can load in here to the bowl season and there's our national championship game. We'll go ahead and sim this one and see what it is that's going to happen. Who takes it? I didn't see anything. An overtime victory for Clemson, 37 to 34. That's impressive. Again, the team that we should have played. I wish we had a chance to see what our 77 overall gray boys could do, but it's not enough. Uh, that looks like at least double overtime, but we'll see. Ohio State, well, it was an even first half, it looks like. Both teams scoring. Both teams held the lead. Ohio State took a big 14-point lead into the third quarter, but it's the fourth quarter with Clemson cl clutching up, scoring with 2.13 left to tie that one to send it to overtime. And then just uh, 
bunch of field goals. Neither offense getting it done early, but then Clemson able to get into the end zone after holding Ohio State to a field goal in double overtime. So a double overtime thriller in the national championship game. You love to see it. That's good news. It means that at least two really deserving teams were there. And it's the Clemson Tigers walking away with the trophy this year. So again, let's just load our playoff tool after completion of the national championship game before advancing past bowl week. We can go ahead and load this dynasty file one more time to make that all set in stone and give Clemson their proper trophy and award recognition. So there it is. National champions, the Clemson Tigers. We'll go ahead and save that real quick. And here we are loaded in. We're sitting at number 20. I feel like our ranking actually got moved around through all that. So uh, if we take a look at our bowl games, everything should look right. There's, uh, well, the numbers are a little bit weird just because of the way things work up uh, at the top, but on the right bottom part of the screen, you can see the actual result of that one. Uh, and Clemson's other two victories on the way toward their national championship. So congratulations to them. Hopefully we can make it into the playoffs ourselves next season. Uh, but something else that happened with our problems last episode really could affect our chances of making it into that playoffs next season anyways. If you guys remember, not only did we lose half a season and lose a bunch of progress with our one games and whatnot, but that also kind of screwed over our recruiting. So I went into the EADB editor and tried to do some stuff. We had 16 scholarships remaining at the end of the last episode. I got it so that we have 11, but it's a little bit weird. It's definitely a little bit wonky if we go to uh, the best players. Things look weird. Uh, all of a sudden, we aren't even in the race with RJ Rivera and it's UTSA. And same with Edwin Clay, except it's Cal, but their background is weird. And same with Air Force and Ben Patrick and Air Force and Lee Williams. And I think Graham Lindsay, maybe Jason Stone. No, we actually just have Jason Stone. So we technically don't have those guys, but we picked up scholarships. So I legitimately have no idea what's going to happen. But if we go and look at our signings for this class, you can see Ben Patrick, RJ Rivera, Graham Lindsay, Edwin Clay, uh, they're all up there. So we have a bunch of five-star signings, but also we don't according to this list. So I legitimately don't know where those players are going if we're going to accidentally create a bunch of twins for next season but we're just going to advance uh, towards the postseason here and see what actually happens. So towards the end of the bowl season, we go. Fingers are crossed is all I can say. All right, here we go. Updating the record books. Carter sets a school season record for sacks with 13 this year, beating uh, Avery Brown's record from 1996 of 11. That's the only record. We're sitting at number 20 in the country. Uh, end of the bowl season, anything crazy on ESPN? Uh, not really. <laughs> Nothing crazy there. Still says 11 scholarships. What now if we go to the top classes? Did it change things? No. Still a little bit wonky. <laughs> Still not sure what's going on. So with all of that being looked at at the end of the season, let's go ahead, or at the end of the bowl season, let's go ahead and advance to the end of the season and we can see if somehow we get these recruits or if everything just completely got broken, we are in a recruiting battle over Jamal Neal. John Jordan has locked us out. Um, I don't see a whole lot of other stuff, though. We did get offered a coaching contract. We are going to absolutely accept this one. Uh, it's a five year extension. We don't want to accidentally not sign it. So we will go ahead and just put our name on the dotted line right there. And with the coaching carousel, as always, we will just go ahead and sim to the next stage and then take a look at it so that we don't have to deal with all the uh, animations. Ooh, well, something big happened. We lost uh, an offense or a defensive coordinator. We gained a good offensive coordinator. Brett Venables, actually, no, Brett Venables still around. That is so huge for us if we're making a big push and then getting Matt Kubik as uh, I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that correctly, but as an offensive coordinator is massive because we can just start throwing all these level ups towards him. Uh, and we've got ourselves now a good line on both sides of the football. We don't quite have the athlete and mathlete, but all of that is going to truly help tremendously. As far as the rest of our coaching changes are concerned, let's take a look. Uh, head coaching positions. 
Is there anything really obvious that's cool? Well, Chip Kelly retired from Arkansas State. Mike Yurichich got fired. I want to say he was a coordinator for us at one point, but at Florida State, it's now Mike Gundy taking over as the head coach. Dan Lanning got fired from Marshall and then gets hired as Kansas State's head coach. Dave Aranda was fired from NC State and Charlie Weiss Jr. gets picked up there. Kenny Dillingham takes over for our new offensive coordinator as the head coach of Texas State. And it's Andy Avalos actually at Washington now. And apparently, our old offensive coordinator, John Arnold, has been hired as the head coach at Kentucky. So, uh, good for him. Good promotion. Gets a chance to show that he can really control a program on his own. And also, he can be part of the uh, goon coaching tree. So we can kind of spread our tendrils out there like Nick Saban has done in real life. We're now at the point of position changes. So we can go ahead and load our NCAA 14 Dynasty tool and go through our draft declaration stage. Again, this will determine if any uh, underclassmen decide to leave. Uh, I don't think that we have anybody going to the draft early by default, and we have a lot of guys uh, graduating, but I don't think we have anybody going to the draft uh, that's a senior anyways. So here it is. Uh, 20 players leaving, none entering the draft, no early entrance, nobody transferring. Some big names, Durham Finch Jr., obviously the top one there. Shame he's not going to make it to the NFL. Uh, maybe if we actually would have been able to control him for the whole season, that would have happened. John Wilson will also be missed. The 84 wide receiver is going to graduate. So will Brian Jones, Frank Blair, Zach Wilson, Stan Williams. We got a lot of names leaving. Jerome Simmons is gone. So it's going to be hard to replace all these guys. Uh, I don't know. We're going to definitely try our hardest, though. So now that we uh, confirm that nobody's going to the draft, we can advance to the next stage. Our transfer request. See if anybody else wants to come and play for us. And, well, let's take a look at the draft results. Nobody for us, but I am curious. Can we just see, like, Alabama? A couple of... No first rounders, actually. That's really surprising. How about uh, the national championship winners in Clemson? Three first rounders, two second rounders, a couple third rounders, and then a few in the later rounds. But uh, they're going to definitely be missing out on some of this production, especially the 92 overall quarterback. But the question is, does anybody want to transfer to come play for us next year? The answer is no, which tends to be the case and probably is one of the things I wish was changed most about uh, the dynasty in this game, especially just these days with the transfer portal existing and all that. Well, let's go to our recruiting. See if what we thought could happen or think may happen will work. Will we get RJ Rivera? I am not sure at all, but we're going to give it a shot. We have a lot of points, but again, everything just shows so wonky with these guys. Uh, like we're not technically not even offering them scholarships. Uh, I don't even know if we're giving out points. Like it shows that we could give them points. It shows that we don't have scholarships offered for them. So what I'm going to do quickly is just offer these guys scholarships just in case. Uh, because I know that things are a little bit wonky. Even though they should be playing for us. And then we've got Jason Stone who I think should be playing for us. No matter what. Maybe he was one of the guys that kind of got broken as well. But we'll just give him a few points. Again, I am not confident that any of this is going to properly work. So... If things set us back, then things set us back, and that's just the way it is. Um, otherwise, we might honestly just go and give everything to, like, one player and just hope that we can get one real commit. And why not Jamal Neal? We're down 365 against Oklahoma State for the 74 overall outside linebacker. He's pretty solid. So how about this? We'll give him 13,000. And then again, just uh, I think it's Jason Stone up there. We'll just like pseudo dump points into him and hope that that does something. It says that we've given out 15,000 points. So we'll hope that that's actually the case. And <laughs> we'll cross our fingers. Uh, if, you know, we, we get kind of screwed over because of that, it is what it is. It'll make things a little bit more difficult for us next year. And we'll just have to work with that. Sometimes things like that happen with your program. So let's go to signing day. I don't feel confident right now, but you never know. All right. And <laughs> RJ Rivera's at UTSA. Ben Patrick's at USC. Lee Williams is at Coastal. Graham Lindsay's at Army. Oh, man. That is, that is pretty rough. We did get Jamal Neal and Kenneth McCauley.
Um, well, I'm not entirely sure what to make of that. <laughs> like top class wise, our signings no longer actually show those guys. Uh, we have a bunch of walk-ons down there at the bottom, but uh, well, I'm going to try to boot up the editor and see if we can do something real quick because I would love to have at least one of those guys. Well, I'm not entirely sure how it worked, but uh, I've got these guys to commit. <laughs> I think that we would have had all of them. We know we had like at least four of them, so then we would have had 15,000 points to spread between the rest. But now RJ Rivera, Ben Patrick, Lee Williams, Graham L Lindsay, and Jason Stone are coming to play for us instead of the fake teams that they were supposed to be for. So I think that that's all correct. Two scholarships remaining. If we take a look at this, we didn't get Edwin Clay, but we did. So I don't know if we'll actually get Edwin Clay, but that's fine. As long as we can get like one of these guys. Let me actually go to the right spot. Top classes. I don't know if that puts us anywhere, uh, but it shows that we picked up all those guys. So even Edwin Clay is on the list. <laughs> we'll see what that means. Uh, but we'll go ahead and just try to advance towards the next stage and hope that we can keep these guys into the position changes. All right, this is, I guess, our real moment of the truth. Are these guys on our roster now as we go into our position changes? And we'll hope for the best. Let's just start out with the athletes. That's RJ Rivera. That's Lee Williams. So we didn't end up getting Edwin Clay or whatever his name was. Um, but that's fine because we have a couple of guys that we desperately needed, including the running back, RJ Rivera. He actually makes a good quarterback. Um, let's take a look. I think we're going to have him run. We desperately need a running back. But, I mean, 90 throw power, 78 throw accuracy, maybe we could throw in a couple of things. And he can play on the defense a little bit, just like Durham Finch could as well. But we'll move him to the running back spot. And Lee Williams, we're going to move uh, tentatively to free safety. But he's definitely going to play in the secondary. So RJ, just like that, comes in as the highest overall running back. I would expect Derek Bentley to actually jump him after postseason or pre yeah, preseason training, off-season training. <laughs> Uh, but we'll have two guys who are mediocre instead of just one guy, so that's nice. And we do actually have a bunch of guys down here at the bottom that aren't very good that we might have commit elsewhere. This is weird because this says that this guy went to Pitt and this guy went to West Virginia, but they're also on our team. So, I mean, things got real wonky to say the least. Now, we do only have two tight ends, but about half a million wide receivers. So I think what we're going to do is see if anybody can do a decent job at tight end and I guess we'll hope for the best because it's not looking great right off the bat and honestly almost nobody is good at it so uh Kyle Wilson goes up to a 47 overall which is about as high as it gets so we're gonna move at least one guy to tight end and again we're gonna redshirt a bunch of guys and probably cut a lot of guys I think that uh the wonky recruiting probably gave us a few more walk-ons than we would have had otherwise and now it's time for me to go through and try to do something with the line because we have almost nobody thank goodness we have two right tackles and we can shift this guy who's actually really bad to the left tackle oh my gosh apparently uh we didn't recruit the offensive line i could have sworn that we picked up some really good pieces but they must have all been on the defensive side because things are looking abysmal for our front line there meanwhile uh left ends we have about a million right ends we have a lot and we've got a lot of defensive tackles so my my fingers are crossed here that at least one of them can play on the offensive side of the football and christian jackson is probably going to be pretty upset about this but the the defensive end number 10 defensive end in the country oh we might move him because we could move a couple of these guys over but uh you know what no, this is a stopgap this is a really tough decision to make, but we got to move one of these guys over. A lot of juniors. There it is. We're going to move Anthony Parsons to the left tackle. Uh, that'll give us a little bit more depth. It's a 53 overall versus a 43, so we have something good happening there. We'll definitely be able to cut some of these defensive tackles. And linebacker-wise, again, it's like very mediocre. We don't have a lot of depth. I feel like just... I mean, we lost 20 players, so... I didn't realize that was happening, and we'll have to account for that in the future, but this is going to be very difficult to replace. The good news is that we have an abundance of solid uh, secondary players, so we have what should be a, a bit of a lockdown pass defense. Uh, I say decent, but that's by our standards, so 
uh, I'm relying on the uh, off-season training because let's just take a look here. Our top players, I know for a fact, are not good. We got all our athletes. Right now, our top player is 83 overall, um, which isn't terrible. I think our tops last year were low 80s to begin with, so Maurice Tate becoming the best. Maybe he can have a monumental off-season and jump up, but we're going to go on towards the, uh, the post-season training, and we'll just have to hope that we don't get obliterated this upcoming year. All right, so here we are now at the training results for our offseason. Let's go ahead and bring back up the progression tool and go through the player progression stage here and see if we have anything really big happen. Again, guys can go up as much as plus 12, I think, and down as much as minus 7. So we really need a lot of luck if we're going to be super competitive next year. And here we go. Uh, right off the bat, <laughs> I don't like what I'm seeing just because Maurice Tate went up plus two overall, which is not very good. Question is, how much is that on his throw power? And actually, plus one on each. 91 throw power, 82 throw accuracy. Don't expect me to stop throwing picks this year because we do not have a great quarterback. Didn't get any faster with his top speed, but got a little bit more acceleration. So this is going to be tough. Again, if we look at all of the reasons why we go up, we have a C minus academics, a C minus in facilities, a D plus in pro potential, 97 for Coach Gunas, the head coach, but offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator at a, at a 33 and a 59. So those we would like to see a little bit higher. As currently it sits, team is 77 overall, again with an 81 offense. So things went up a little bit, but our overall stayed the exact same. The rest of our top players, we actually have a decent amount of guys uh, over 80 overall. Jody Gentry, the second best player on this team right now. The wide receiver is a sophomore, 90 speed. Goes up to a 93 acceleration, so that's good. Uh, any big gainers? I did see one, and we can actually check that like this. Mike Moore went up plus eight to become an 80 overall corner, so that's really good for the junior. We had Devin Royal, our freshman or uh, senior free safety, go up plus six. Tight end Brian Curtis went up plus six. So did Joel Bryant, the outside linebacker. Now, here's the part that I really don't want to see. Who went down the most? Oh, that's a lot of regression. Nathan Scruggs, our, one of our corners, goes down four. He'll probably get cut. Lance James goes down three at the right end spot. We had a strong safety and Dallas Miller going down three. That is so, so brutal. He lost some speed. Must have had some sort of nagging injury that he had to take time off for because that is good, not good. Michael McCullough, the wide receiver, goes down three. And then Philip Anderson, Ron Johnson, the third goes down and Troy Carter. So some of our defensive strengths, some of the best players regressing in this season. Ron Johnson, Troy Car Carter and Dallas Miller. That is really going to hurt. Well, there it is. There's our top players again. And oh, man, it just hurts to see, especially Troy Carter. He won three awards last year and then he got worse. Uh, maybe let it go to his head. A junior from Mississippi. It's not what you like to see, but we've got it in the game. So now we can advance once again to the next stage where we will cut players. And I feel like we have a decent amount of players to cut. So let's go ahead and do that. Six of them that we need to get rid of. Let's just start at the bottom and work our way through. We actually have some uh, offensive linemen for sure we won't be able to get rid of. But there will be guys that we can. Steve Daniels is gone. Steve Henderson is gone. Defensive tackle Ross Dunn is gone. <laughs> this has actually been pretty easy. Kyle Wilson, uh, we're going to keep him around because he's a tight end and we just put him there. But Brady Battle, he's a bust and he's bad and he's gone. Let's see, we have two more left tackle. I don't think we can get rid of, but we could get rid of this redshirt freshman free safety. No, we don't have enough free safeties. How about Nathan Scruggs, the uh, corner who actually regressed? We'll just get rid of him. And I said that we have a lot of running backs, so we can afford to get rid of a 63 overall Marcus Jordan. And I think I'm fine with that. Now, I guess the next question is, do we have any like seniors that won't play? There's no reason, I guess, to cut them. But yeah, it's tempting to get rid of some of these guys. Regardless, they've survived the chopping block for now. So another stage of the offseason is completed. We can advance towards our custom conferences. And we're not quite going to do uh, a realistic conference yet. I think I'm going to save that for our next dynasty whenever that happens. And I'm telling you right now, I've been planning that one. Uh, whatever the next series is, it's going to be pretty intense. So really what we're coming into this one for is the ability to change 
coaching skill trees. We won't touch uh, Venables or Matt Kubik, obviously. But I think I want to reset ours a little bit. I want a second level in the locksmith. We need three unlocks per season, I think, pretty desperately. And I also want to fully fill out the pipeline just so that we can have as many pipelines as possible. And then we'll go through and uh, we'll do some of the anti-freeze. So uh, our game management has gotten a little bit worse, but hopefully our recruiting is going to get a little bit better. And obviously, as we've seen in the past couple of seasons and with the offensive line as awful as it is, we need any help that we can get on the recruiting trail. So that is another stage of the offseason very quickly completed. And now we can go to our preseason and take a look at what will be the new recruits for this year. So we can start this preseason and right off the bat, take a look at the top of the screen, number 24 in the nation. I don't know why, but after the season that we had last year, combined with kind of the lack of talent on this team, I was not expecting to be ranked, but that makes things certainly a whole lot easier for this season. Right off the bat, let's go ahead and redshirt our players. We're going to go for some crazy redshirting, I think. I'm honestly almost tempted to call this a throwaway season and redshirt like everybody, but I don't think that's smart. So we will sit the freshman quarterback because we don't need that many. Or he will sit Daniel Vinson, junior running back. He's not very good. Um, and it looks like Derek Bentley will be starting most likely, but we'll see. I like the speed of RJ Rivera. So honestly, he might be the one that gets more touches. At wide receiver, we do have a lot of guys, and it seems like everybody... Oh my gosh, we have so many more than I expected. Oh, we got to scroll a really long ways. Anyways, we're going to sit Daryl Owens. Um, we have like half a million on the roster. Half a million of them redshirted, so... I don't know. Things hopefully will look a lot different on this team next season. For the tight ends, we are going to sit the sophomore uh, position switch tight end Kyle Wilson for the season. He's only 51 overall, so again, hopefully we can see him get a little bit better. Although that speed and acceleration at the tight end spot could catch a few people off guard. And we are really struggling on the offensive line, so... Uh, I don't think I can afford to redshirt anybody. I know technically uh, we don't really have to worry about that at all, but I'm not going to risk anything. Maybe there's some freak injury. That's the last thing we want to see. And I don't know if I want to sit uh, like Philip Anderson. He's pretty good. Uh, I don't know if I want to sit really any of these guys, but we might as well sit the freshmen who are the same overall as the seniors so that that way they can be a little bit better by the time their senior season rolls around. We're kind of... Uh, feeling this one out from a future perspective. So that will probably help us a little bit. And it's just going to be kind of the same thing around the board and kind of a crazy one, but we're actually going to sit Dallas Miller for a season. After his regression, we just have more guys at the strong safety spot that are better. So I don't see the reason that we should play him necessarily. And that's going to do it for our uh, preseason redshirting. And then the only thing we will got to change, make sure that Maurice is in front of Albert. Uh, we don't want to be starting Albert this year. And we're going to start RJ Rivera as the starting running back and let Derek Bentley come in just to be kind of a stronger backup. And RJ is actually going to be our return man for the season as well. Definitely the fastest guy on the team. 95 speed, 95 acceleration as a true freshman is pretty impressive. So hopefully we can actually return a couple kicks for touchdowns uh, on this season. We had maybe one, maybe two, but not with our starter. We had to rely on Ron Johnson coming in to do the job. So uh, hopefully things are a little bit better this year. Now let's go ahead and change our custom schedule. And we're going to make this really, really difficult. I already see a lot of highly ranked teams on our schedule to begin with, but we are going to continue to make that difficult. UCF, I like as an option, a playoff team, the number 17, but I want that bye week more towards the middle of the season. So if UCF is available week one, we'll go ahead and play on the road there. That'll give us an A minus. And I think what we're going to do is kind of play a bunch of playoff teams. So we will go on the road at Auburn. That gives us an A plus strength of schedule. And let's have UCF come visit us. And then for the final uh, out of conference matchup, what do we have? There's Clemson. We should have played them in the bowl game. Yeah, we're going to schedule Clemson. This is going to be a brutal schedule. If we manage to win uh, 10 games, we should be able to make the playoff just because how good it is. Currently, we have the number one, the number two, 
and the number three teams all on our schedule. Throw in Ohio State at number seven, and this might be one of the most brutal lineups in the nation. Well, this puts us now to the final bit of the preseason, and honestly, always my favorite part. I love recruiting in this game. I know it's not as good or in depth as other ones, you know, 13, a lot of people tend to like, but hopefully this changes things up really well. We're going to be using Fang's Recruiting Generator. That can be found on the College Football Revamp Discord. And if you're looking for a good video on how to install it, go ahead and check out Nitra Drive's video on it. He did a great job explaining what you need to do uh, and has good links for downloads there as well. So one of the big things that I'm excited to see is the improved recruits. I have seen on that College Football Revamp Discord recruits that were in the 90s overall, which kind of helps mimic players who show up and are ready to contribute day one in real life. So hopefully that can happen for us. It also makes it more difficult for bad schools to recruit in general. So who knows? Things could be really, really tough for us this year. But we can go ahead and generate these prospects. Uh, and we'll see their names. But I'm actually going to back out and use the second part of the uh, recruit generator to change their names to be a little bit more realistic as well. So let's see if I did this right. Names are crazy. Players can be crazy. And right away, the top player in the nation, Marshawn Adebayejo. I don't think I got that right. I might have. If I got that first try, I'm pretty impressed. But he's an 87 overall defensive tackle. And one of the things that this does in general is increase the amount of good offensive and defensive linemen. And it kind of nerfs Juco players and athletes. So hopefully some of this can work out pretty well. And hopefully we can get some really cool, good players Right off the bat, number one ride receiver in the country, Chris Miller, 82 overall, has us fourth on his board. And we'll see, 404 points behind, but the pitch info is another thing that can change, and it's that sometimes the same thing can be featured twice. So you can kind of see that as this guy really values being on a championship contending team. So we get an A- for two of those, which is really good news for us. So right off the bat, we got to add Chris Miller, the possession receiver. 4 5 40, not the quickest guy. Uh, who knows? Maybe he could be a gem still. He has eight route running. He's not the strongest player, but oh man, I am so excited to see what we got. How about other players that like us? JT Hansen, a 77 overall blocking tight end. We're first with him. Second with another wide receiver, JC Young. And it just seems like it's all these wide receivers want to come play for us. We have so many wide receivers. I'm going to add these guys to scout them, but we cannot take four wide receivers. It would be devastating. There's also tight ends going crazy for us as well. Number two tight end in the nation, Drew Allen. Also excited to uh, maybe come play for us. He's 84 overall. And uh, Hinkley Cager, a nice athlete. See, let's see. What does this athlete do? Well, it says that he's okay and a few things maybe the defensive line i see a lot of d's on this guy uh no pun intended how about this a 42840 for elijah meyer again it's an athlete he's really quick but he's not going to be quite as good as he potentially could have been in the past and just scrolling through this guy's a juco sophomore but look at this 91 overall that is so so freaking good we have a chance maybe to pick him up. I'm going to throw him onto the board because that would be exactly what our offensive line needs. Kind of a similar situation with this 87 overall center. A couple of A pluses there. I don't know. We could go crazy this season. But just in general, a lot of really cool stuff happening there. And I'm excited to see if we can get like a, a 90 overall commit because that would change things tremendously for us. All right. Well, we've got the full board set. Time to start scouting these guys to see what could happen. Christian Grimmel, the guard, 91 overall, goes up to a 92. That's insane. I don't think our chances to pick this guy up will be very good, but I got to keep him on the board just in case, and we're just going to keep looking. Elliot Erdman, 90 overall. Drew Allen, the tight end, goes up to an 87. This is awesome, and I like that it doesn't just make us good as there's our first gem of the season with Chris Miller. Uh, but it also makes other teams good because everybody's going to start to get some really, really good talent. Or at least the top teams are going to start to get some really, really good talent. So right off the bat, just finding some incredible players. Damian Coppett, you got to love it. And we're going to try to cop him. Well, A.L. Fulton, interesting name there, is our last guy to recruit. 
uh, or to, to scouts, I should say, in this preseason. So, I mean, just looking at it, how many of these guys over 80 overall? That would be incredible to get. I, I mean, if we could pick up this guard and center combination, our line would probably go from the worst in the Big Ten to top five at the very least. And then, you know, there's a couple other guys, Keith Bryson, Austin Ash, uh, Dane Clemens Valde. If you could add any of these guys, that would be so great. Now, before we start the season, there are a few of our freshmen that will be eligible and will have their name changed by channel members. And again, if you want to have that happen, tier two channel members and up can once a season rename an incoming freshman to a name of their choice. Uh, so long as it's not too Mimi, you know, we don't want any bendovers or Mike Hawks on the team. But guys like Ron Johnson and Jody Gentry have been submitted by viewers. And if that's something that interests you, please feel free to consider joining as a tier two or up channel member. Uh, it really helps support the channel. And I think it's a great way for you guys to be able to get involved as well. My dream is that one day, basically every single freshman coming in will be user named. Well, with all of that done, let's just go ahead and start the season. We can take a quick look at ESPN, maybe some Heisman favorites or, and some all Americans. And then, see maybe if we're favored to win our first matchup that's going to be a really rough start to the season well i'm not sure how i feel about this three preseason all americans but only eight preseason all conference players i say only like it's a bad thing but uh let's take a look see some preseason polls and where everything's sitting we already know the number one two and three team because we are expected to play all of them 90 overall for michigan and 88 for clemson and a 90 for auburn but the rest of the top 10 is Notre Dame, Texas, TCU, Ohio State, USC, Oklahoma, and then our Teal Boys. They're still chugging along. They've had some disappointing seasons, but they're still getting the favorable treatment at an 86 overall. Uh, we know that we're still ranked in the top 24, so that's really nice. And we are definitely the worst team. We actually went up to a 79 overall in the offseason, so that is really good news for us. We lost 20 players. It feels like we're getting worse, but we are technically still getting better. Our preseason Heisman watch. Oh gosh. Well, it's the Auburn quarterback that we're going to have to face way too soon in this season. USC quarterback, Louisiana Tech quarterback, the Cal running back, and the Navy running back. Navy running back, kind of an obvious one, but he is 91 overall. So Steve Quinn's probably going to do a pretty good job this season. As far as preseason All-Americans go, where are I, our guys that made it? Troy Carter makes sense. So does Austin Sims, our two defensive linemen, kind of obliterated, but that means we have one more as a return man. No, it's Dallas Miller, who we redshirted for the season. He is a preseason All-American, but he's not going to be able to hold on to that title this year as he's just going to be riding the pine all year long. Nothing there in the All-NCAA, but what is it for the All-Big Ten? Who do we got there? Uh, Brian Curtis, our tight end. That's good news. Carter Sims, as you would expect. Ron Johnson the third is there, even though, what, he regressed, didn't he? So there's Dallas Miller and Luke Clark. Somehow our kicker makes it, like, the local kid from the Ipsy. And that must mean that we have a couple of second teamers. Uh, Logan and Whitaker. So a decent amount of our defense. Hopefully that means that we can actually stop teams from scoring on us, make things a little bit easier for our offense, and that offensive line is going to struggle all year long. So the running is going to be difficult, and the passing might be even more difficult. All right, as one last quick look, let's take a look at UCF, the number 17 team in the country. They're coming to play us, so maybe that's why it's looking good, but we are favored to win this game. They have the better offense. We have the better defense. Otherwise, it's a pretty evenly matched game. But unfortunately, that's going to have to wait until the next episode. If you enjoyed this one, please go down and hit the like button. It's a super easy way to help support the channel. So is subscribing. And then again, if you want a couple extra perks, if you want to name your own players in this series, another easy way to support the channel is to become a tier two channel member or higher. But it's certainly not something that I expect. After you've done that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to uh, Nitro Drive's video on how to use Fang's Recruiting Generator, my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, and then there's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the College Football Revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster, you guys are the Grey Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios!